Previously on the Great Ace Attorney. What are you doing? Ah, uh, wow, well, there really are only like 10 people that live in this city, aren't there? Good lord. Excuse me, Mr. Surgeon, sir. You're a call for jury duty. I'm currently in the middle of surgery right now, sir. Okay, whatever. I can, it can wait. See you later, Mr. Holmes. What, what the devil? Aren't you gonna finish? Also, aren't you gonna put me under? Did you leave your Latson in there? What the fuck? Yeah, sir, I'll be back in a jiffy, all right? You just hang tight, big guy. Now, back to grunting at people. Sneakopee, back with some more of the Great Ace Attorney. When we last left off, we have finally realized that yes, Egg Benedict is actually involved in this shit. Because his green blood is all over the damn place. He got shot to shit at some point. I don't know how or why, like, was he standing behind Holmes when he got shot? No, 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 that, that's not it. No, because there was definitely a separate shot because he, uh, there was a separate bullet. There was a third shot. So who, who shot, who fired it, when? Why? I like I, I feel like it had to have been before like before we got there, right? Because we didn't hear another gunshot go off. I don't think. Although if, if that happened, you also would think with just how close we are the, the detective agency is, we would hear it, you know? You would think at least, but uh, maybe not. I don't know. It's, it's possible that they just have very th thick walls. They do have a couple of buildings between them, so I don't know. But it is getting confusing and I'm like, I I don't know. I don't know where this is going, to be honest. I mean, I, I guess the, the most obvious thing is, well, it's Egg Benedict's gonna just be the bad guy, but um, just how uh, much this game is sort of, like, messed with our expectations, I, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if there's something a little more to it than that. I mean, clearly, he was trying to get back there, right? And it also seems clear that the, um, the Ten Pillar Brothers, they know him, right? It sounds like they were hired by him. Um, did he try to go back there himself at some point? Was he with them at the exact moment they were there? But then why didn't we see him? Why didn't we see or hear the gunshot that hit him? I, I don't know. Weird. But we've hunted him down because, thank God, there's only 10 people that live in this entire city. So, of course, the lady who works at the uh, telegram place also has seen him before. And uh, they're going to be bringing him in. So, I guess we'll maybe learn what his real fucking name is this time. But anyway, uh, last episode, uh, Fatty McCatcat said, uh, Congratulations, Nico. According to my calculations, this is the 250th episode of of Ace Attorney. Not counting those two 60 second sketches in the playlist. Thank you for the hundreds of hours of last Nico. And you know what? I, I read this comment and I thought you were joking. I was like, no, that's maybe they're talking about like combinations of like council voices or something, or maybe some Don Garoppa thrown in there. Cause like, I was like, I don't think I've done 250 episodes. Of nope, I fucking did. Oh my God. I thought like maybe at most like a hundred or something, but 250 episodes? Jesus Christ! And you guys are wondering, Nico, why do you seem so burnt out on this series? Well, there you go! <laughs> Granted, I, I'm saying that in relation to the beginning of the game where I felt sort of burnt out with uh, all the similar mechanics, but I'm feeling I'm enjoying the shit out of it right now, so don't misunderstand that. I'm incredibly enjoying this right now, and it's honestly getting like the way this is going, it's, it's sort of in line now to be somewhere among my top favorite Ace Attorney games, because it's just been tons of fun and different and i like that i like it different <laughs> oh my god 250 episodes that is absolutely insane that's right guys actually no i just consider the ace attorney series in general all these games it's just one single endless let's play <laughs> guys welcome to part 250 of ace attorney that's right this is the let's play that never ends i'm gonna get to the end of dgs2 and be like all right guys all right, I've done probably like 300 episodes now of Ace Attorney. It seems like we're finally done. Then they're going to announce the, the next Ace Attorney game. I'm like, fuck! <laughs> it never ends! <laughs> Holy shit. Well, Fatty McCann, thank you for that incredible realization and absolute mindfuck. <laughs> and it's for that reason you are comment of the day. Jesus Christ. That is absolutely insane. Don Ropa, I don't think he has got shit on that. I don't think. I mean, the Dog Robot, I don't know, some of the Dog Robot games did get pretty long, especially V3 with all the extra bonus shit in it. But there's definitely way more games of Ace Attorney than Dog Robot. Okay, so we're going on to Trial Part 3. We're gonna bring in Egg Benedict, figure out what's going on with that, and let's get started. Hopefully we'll get him in there. Hopefully he's just hanging out at work today. <laughs> Even though he sounds, it seems like he got shot to shit. Where was he hit, I wonder? No, never mind, he's just fucking dead. And it turns out he was the bad guy. The end! <laughs> See you in DGS2, guys! Uh, April 17th, 2.41 p.m., Old Bailey Defendant Lobby! Gina, good job hanging in there. Good job not fucking it up by shooting a smoke grenade right into the judge's face. 
I hate how I've gotten so used to seeing her like this. <laughs> Stop being so soon soon. Gene Bean. Don't call me Gene Bean! I Gene Bean! <laughs> Only Iris can call me that. You okay? You seem kinda down. Why? Why are you fighting so hard for someone like gormless like me? Huh? You saw the photo? The photo? Oh, you mean this! Holmes's camera really didn't help us out there! Give me the goods, old man! I honestly didn't even know there was a photo like that! I don't want to say I'm done for after seeing this! I won't lie, my stomach started not up when I was presented. I was like, ah, oh, Gina, come on, you silly Billy. Why'd you tell me this? Even after all is said and done, you still want to say you trust me. Yeah, of course. Huh. Hey, Gene Bean, would you mind telling us something? What really happened that night? Huh? I mean, why not, right? Come on, just, just fucking tell us. Don't have to make us figure everything out. Maybe you've been able to piece together a lot of the story. But if you'll tell us, I'll give you a piece of candy. <laughs> I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Fine. All right, here we go. But not after we all ate at Holmes' Holmes place. I went with Iris and spoke with you, Lord, and your gaff. Right, I remember that. It's not my gaff. It's my very nice study. After that, I couldn't get a week of sleep at all. So I went over to that pawn shop. I just had to check. This is about our manuscript, right? The Hound of the Baskervilles. Bad, I just wanted to steal some shit. I don't know what kind of story it is, but I was sure it would have been pretty bad for Holmes if it got out. That's the reason why he fit about popping it at the pawn shop. At least, that's what I thought at the time. So I... He broke into Hatch's shop. I just had to know if the manuscript was actually there or not, you know? Of course, I never thought the things would turn out the way they did. I smashed the lock on the entrance and went inside. Everything was pitch black. So I let the lamp, lamp on the table. After that... What are you doing? Ah! I thought me I was going to stop. Oh, I knew what was do what I was doing. Give me that gun! <laughs> I snatched the gun from the counter and I was pointing right at him. You were that girl from earlier today. Is this the sort of thing pickpockets are up to nowadays? The the, the manuscript. The Sherlock Holmes one. Is it here? What in the world do you want? The hound of the something something fails. If it's here, I want to see it. I'm sorry. Even if my life is at stake, I cannot hand over another customer's belongings. He's like, bitch, you're speaking in the fucking choir here. Do you know how many times I point that gun at myself per day? It's a bad character quirk. I'm just telling you right now. But anyway, give me the manuscript or I'll show you. I don't want to nick it. I just want to have a look at it. Look is all. You want to see it? I need to know if Holmes actually left it here. Please! Let me see the manuscript. Okay, okay, I get it. Please, just put the gun down. He body slams to you like a Eat shit, bitch. Boo! Now go unlock the storeroom and the two of us went inside. The manuscript was actually there. Holmes was telling the truth. Gene Bean, did, did you do that for me? No! Suddenly I heard something coming from inside the shop. That must have been when the Tin Pillar Brothers broke in. D did you hear that? Someone's out there! Good grief. This is my shop an exclusive gathering place for mis miscreants tonight. Oh, bugger. I forgot to close the bloody door after I came in. I'll take a look. Give me the gun. I should go too. Don't be daft. You stay here. Don't move a muscle. Give me that fucking gun. I'm gonna go lay waste to these mofos. After he said that, he went and took the gun from me and left. I 
I tried to hear what was happening from inside the dark storeroom, but suddenly, I heard sounds of a struggle. I felt like I had to go and help. Right about when I was going to leave the room. Oh. I think there were two gunshots. Oh my god, there were two gunshots. They were fired almost simultaneously. So do we just not hear when we went in there? We just didn't. So maybe he was. Maybe he was standing behind Holmes like... Maybe he was ready to ambush him, and then one of the dumbass Tim Pillar brothers, like, they shot Holmes, but then they hit him, too, and he, Ah, you dickhead! Ah! <laughs> what, seriously, why did the... Why did, uh, Egg Benedict hire these two knuckleheads? <laughs> did they really look that capable to you? Their big, goofy, twitchy, bulgy eyes, and hilarious antics. And then he dropped like a brick, right in front of me! I rushed to shut the bloody door quick, and I locked... I locked it! You worried the culprit might have come in afterwards, right? I picked up the gun from the uncles, and if they try to come in, I had to fight back. Shoot have right in the dick, I would. Except there wasn't any bullets in the gun, so I would have been shit out of luck. When I looked down at him, I realized... Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's right, actually. Then I guess Hatch must have shot him, right? I think. Wait. No, that's... No, 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 I'm not... I'm not... There's still another gun. That's the point. There's another gun. Because... So two shots were fired. Two shots were fired. So it couldn't have been either Hatch... Or the Tim Pillar is shooting. But when then wait, when did Hatch shoot his gun then? <laughs> That's what it actually is confusing. Fuck. When did he when did he shoot his gun then? Cause because then he couldn't have shot it. If he shot it out there, maybe he shot it. They shot at Holmes. And then Oh god, I'm so confused now. <laughs> like trying to like wrap my head around how this is possible. Hatch shot Egg. And then the Tim Pillar shot Holmes. Or Egg shot Holmes. And then the Tim Pillar shot Hatch. Maybe. Uh, possibly. I, I don't know. So many gods got... I looked down at him, I realized. Oh, he's fucking dead. He was already dead. Already dead. And then the back of me head go real cold. I can't really remember anything after that. Oh, uh, she just like pass out, I guess. That was when you fell unconscious, right? If only I hadn't been such a cock up, then Ash would have wouldn't have had to die for me. Did you tell any of this to the police? Of course I did, but nobody would believe me. Lie will only get you in more trouble. They said. Don't worry, just just hold out for a little longer. Hey, you were corner the culprit in a flash. That's right, got this shit. Give me that gun, Iris. Is it really him? A Benedict. It's a goofy ass name. Hmm. The bloke who looked down on me with that divot grin on his face. Ooh. He was looking at the shop that night, dancing around like Memji, I know it. Doing that weird moonwalk of his. I don't know how he does it. It's like he's walking forward, but he's going backwards. I still don't know this real name, but I have no doubt he's involved with the crime. Thanks for telling me all this, Gina. Huh? All this left is to leave it to Ryu. You can sit back and relax. Naruto. Yeah? What is it, Gene? How can you still say that you trust me? Have you already forgotten about everything that happened two months ago? Me and that bug on my gundle. We lied to you. And because of that, you ended up letting a murderer go skull free Well, yeah. You don't have to rub it in my face. I'll never forget. Never! Huh? I had no choice back then. And I still feel that regret to this day. But I promised you at the start, didn't I? No matter what happens, I'll trust you until the bitter end. But I can still be feeding you lies! You might be defending a murderer again, you know? Pretty sure you wouldn't be saying that if you were, though, you know? Like you, I've also stood as a defendant in court before. Blimey! I know, right? Twice, actually. Well, I didn't get into court the second time, but... I'm afraid for murder a lot, okay? It was a murder case back in Japan. Even I knew that I looked suspicious. I had convinced myself that nobody would believe me. But then a surrogate! Wow! There was one man who offered to defend me, no matter what it meant for him. 
he was my best friend. Oh, here comes this jam right now. Narahodo, is there anyone who trusts you more than me? Leave it to me. All you have to do is trust in me. I was so happy that I start crying. But that moment, somewhere deep inside me, I couldn't help but think. In truth, even he suspects me, doesn't he? But, I was wrong. <laughs> this song is fucking awesome. Once the trial started, he made it plain as day. Ah! He really did trust me. And gradually, my trust in him strengthened as well. That's when I realized, if I wanted others to trust me, I had to place my trust in them first. First, place your trust in others? No matter what happens, Gina, I trust you. You don't need to worry about a thing. Even though I'm a scheming line, dirty little tea leaf. Gina, you're different from a gundle. What? That's right, you're a friend after all. Uh, Iris. We know you very well. You can trust us, Gina. That's all there is to it. Yep. That's all you have to do. Yep, yep. <laughs> Nara Oda. Slayer, we're in the middle of a fucking moment here. Don't care, get in here. Travel for super shortly, return to the cow corner at once. Y yes, sir. Defending and defense, I played both roles at least once. That's why I understand just how much it takes to truly trust someone from the bottom of your heart. And more than that, I understand the weight of having someone else fully place their trust in you. Aww. I, saw, I like that sort of, uh, sort of, uh, role reversal there. Now, now he's the one, he's the Asogi in this case, right? And now the curtain rises on the final battle. Hope you're watching, Suzuto. And you too, partner. You too. Asagi! I miss him so demon much. April 17th, 1.41 p.m., Old Bailey Crown Court. Everybody shut the hell up and get back in your damn doodly seats. Court is now back in session for the trial of Gina Lestrade. Lord Van Zeeks, we were able to summon the witness. We were able to issue a subpoena to the telecommunications office. Unfortunately, due to the rain, his coach will be arriving late. For God's sakes. Mm, very well. During the recess, Inspector Gregson told me the details about the night of the crime. Overlooking this third bullet was a fatal blunder indeed. My deepest apologies, my lord. You all are absolute garbage. Why do we pay you anything? We should be paying you less than anything. And that's how Gumshoe got to be paid absolutely nothing for his work. <laughs> I carried all the way to the great old United States of America, and Gumshoe's pay has never been good ever since. Now, regarding the evidence gained through the defense's use of forensic chemicals, unfortunately, it is isn't admissible as evidence due to the lack of clear scientific basis. Man, yeah, fuck you, dude. Screw you, old man! Dratch, this will be the last day to hear of me at Holmesy. I'm gonna get them good! My lord! The winner's summoned by the court has just arrived! Very good. Bring him in at once. Egg Benedict. I didn't think we'd see him in court, of all places. I clearly haven't played an Ace Attorney game. Oh, hello there. The court appreciates your prompt arrival, despite our short notice. But of course, it is only natural for an upstanding London citizen such as myself. Now then, please state your name and occupation for the court. 
Your real name? Rupert Crowgray. I work as a technician in a telegraph office. Crowgray? The two of us work at the heart of London as telegraph graphists, responsible for the city area. So, for what reason have I been called here today? I believe you should have been briefed on the situation by an officer during the ride here. Yes, that's correct. I heard this has to do with some murder in a Baker Street pawn shop. Something about me sneaking to the shop on the night of the incident? Show us your bullet wound! Quite right. That is the defense's accusation. Don't make me laugh. Seriously. Now witness the court demands your honest testimony. I mean, freaking Gregson was over there for this shit, right? And weren't they also looking for him? He pointed a gun at us, we saw him, and he dashed out of the shop, right? So shouldn't he still be, like, under arrest for threatening to kill people? <laughs> for pointing a gun at us, right? Did Gregson forget about that, too? He's just like, ah, ah, whatever. All I care about is me, fish, and chips. Nothing else. Testify about this accusation towards you. Very well. It would be my pleasure. I'm gonna do it to the sick beat and and I I want it that way. Alright, about the accusation. Even a man like me will deign to visit a pawn shop once in a while. You claim that I broke into that pawn shop with these miscreants on the night of the murder. I don't see how you can expect me not to laugh at such a false allegation. And you even claim that my blood was present at the crime scene. But shady forensic chemicals made by a shady detective can hardly be called evidence. And my blood isn't green! I'm not an alien! Hmm. Then of course, you assert that you had nothing to do with the crime. I'm honestly shocked and appalled. It's amazing how a detective's silly toy has the power to bring the court to its crown court to its knees. It is the way of the court to respect the will of its jury. Funny you should mention that, as that lot up there is nothing but a band of disappointments. <laughs> Watch your mouth! So, how long must I play along with this farce? You will be free to leave soon. If you can prove that you have nothing to do with the crime, that is. Is that all? Then it looks like I'll be able to make it in back in time for afternoon tea. Now, defense, begin your cross-examination. We meet again, Mr. Egg Benedict. What was your real name again? Rupert Crowgray? Where's the pun there? Your mom was a pun last night. Mmm. Pardon me, I don't think we've met. I'm Ryanuski Naruhoto, attorney in law. I introduced myself to you once before. Rupert Crowgray, pleased to make your acquaintance. In any case. Oh! W whoa! Let's get this over with quickly, shall we? Ah! What a show off! Yeah! It's all sweaty with his head, greasy hair. Ugh! I don't want this! Alright! Let's get started. Okay, even a man like me will deign to visit a pawn shop once in a while. Mata! Mata! What do you mean, visit a pawn shop? Mr. Crow Gray, we met it around midday on the day of the crime, did we not? Though you seem to have been using a fake name at the time. Egg Benedict. What kind of... Iggyati. The witness is currently giving testimony on the night of the crime. At this point, there's no reason for him to answer any other questions. Seriously? Come on, man! He's clear he was going there to rob the place before! Thank you. I have no desire to answer meaningless questions. He's trying to avoid saying anything that might leave him open to an attack. This guy's already getting on my nerves. We just started. You claim that I broke into that pawn shop with these miscreants on the night of the murder. Uh -huh. Are you saying you don't know these two men? These fools standing next to me. <laughs> Perish the thought. I don't keep company with the riffraff, you see. I don't trust him. But apart from that, I have a question. Who was it that dared to make such an absurd indictment against me? It was the attorney over there. How ridiculous! What the- <laughs> This great empire allowing a Japanese to stand in her courts. What a foolish mistake. 
Hey, I'm quite good at my job. Anyway. Where does he get his dance lessons, I wonder? I don't see how you can expect me not to laugh at such a false allegation. Where were you at 1 a.m. on the night of the crime? Who knows? Most nights I'm asleep long before then. But what can I tell you? What I can tell you is that I certainly wasn't hanging around with these two. Can you prove that? Gyari, Japanese boy. You seem to be misunderstanding something. What would that be? The witness claims that he was not present at the scene of the crime. But he is under no, no obligation to prove that he is an alibi. You think that he was at the crime scene. The burden of proof falls onto you, since you are trying to challenge the witness. Ah! Instead of badgering the witness with useless questions, back up your own claims. Oh, so gorgeous. I don't think interpretive dance is accepted in the language in the courtroom. He's got to move his shoulders like this. Shorty, ready, set, go. And even claim that my blood was present at the crime scene. The well, it was, and it was gross. There's no doubt that traces of blood were found at the crime scene. We found them thanks to the chemicals developed by the Sherlock Holmes. Oh, you think I'm the only man in the world with blood running through his veins? How do you know that the, the blood you found belongs to me? It could easily have come from one of these two, no. Everyone's blood has a slightly different makeup. Mr. Holmes' special chemicals react with... Ridiculous! Who is this Holmes character you keep prattling on about? He's the great detective. Everyone in London knows him. A great detective. Don't you find that phrase is a little embarrassing? You've been reading too many fairy tales if you dreamed up a character like that. Wait, did someone just react? Oh, someone did! Excuse me, Mr. Tim Pillar. Uh, yeah, what? <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I meant the other Mr. Tim Pillar. I meant Luigi there. How many times do I have to say it? I'm not. Oh, for God! For God's sakes, Mr. Gregson! I'm not Wally. Yes, I know. <laughs> ah! Nemi Tim Pillar. Uh, uh, I. Uh, you what? You, you what? You what? Just now, you were gazing at Mr. Crowgray as if you were deep in thought. May I ask what? Ask you why? No, 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 you got wrong. It wasn't me. I swear. It was uh, this bloke here. Uh, what? Nemi. Answer the question, please. When you were looking at Crow Gray, what came to your mind? Uh, uh, no, I, I mean, I wasn't thinking nothing. I swear I'm a dead mom. I wasn't thinking nothing, like, don't swing that can around or you open your wound again. Oh my god almighty. You are so fucking stupid, you know, that I'm going to stab you with this cane. Even if it does open my gaping wound hole from that gunshot the other day. Oh, god damn it. Wound? Uh, uh, well, well, yeah, I mean, uh, I was only shot uh, um, two days ago, you know. So I, I was just a little concerned, right? <laughs> uh oh. Oh yeah. You meant you're really not to pick him there, Mr. Crowgray. Uh, don't I, Mr. Crowgray? Did you hear what he just said? Oh. And if I did, it looks like your good friend here was concerned for your health. More specifically, he's worried about the wound on your arm. My lord. Yes. I have no idea what these two men are talking about. I believe that I should not be forced to testify about anything unrelated to me. Hmm. Two nights ago, someone was shot and injured at the crime scene. From the height at which the bullet was found, it's likely that the victim was shot in the arm. Mr. Crowgray, let's take a look at your arm. Show us what you're hiding on your left arm. I refuse. Without any decisive evidence, connect me with those two hoodlums over there. I am under no obligation to submit such a demand. <laughs> like he's gripping it right now. In the first place, I do not... I do not even have a connection to the victim's pawn shop, let alone this trial. You have no right to make such insinuations against my character. 
Mm. You claim that you're completely unrelated to the victim's pawn shop. My lord! Please have Mr. Crowgray add that statement to his testimony. Very well. Let us continue with the cross-examination. Do you have any objections, witness? Let me see your gaping wound hole. Um, in any case, I'm completely unrelated to the victim's pawn shop. Sure about that, bitch? Does this belong to you? Do you happen to recognize this disc? Why would I? This disc was being held at Hatch's pawn shop until the day of the murder. The defendant, Gina, moved to redeem the item. But all of a sudden, a man jumped in and tried to steal the item from her. As you know, Mr. Crow Gray, that man was you. How many times am I say this until you listen? That man was not me. I've never even seen a disc like that before. There's a bloodstain on this disc, how however small it may be. At first glance, it appears to be a thumbprint. You can see numerous metal pins on the face of this disc. When the criminal tried to steal the disc, he cut his thumb. Mm. Since the criminal left blood on this disc, that obviously means that there should be a cut on his thumb. Oh, of course. Mr. Crow Gray. You may refuse to let us see your arm, but how about we take a quick peek at the tip of your thumb? I wager that we'll see a certain little cut on it. So we didn't heal up in a couple of days. Well, it appears I may have underestimated you. What? So you admit it then. You admit that you have a cut on your thumb because you tried to steal the disc. Gregson, don't you remember this guy? This guy was there, di right? Shouldn't he be saying something? Ah, oh, whatever. I'm just fucking window dressing by this point. Order, order the court. What do you have to say, witness? I think there's a slight misunderstanding going on here. To say that I tried to steal the disc is not at all accurate, and I'm tired of hearing it. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> that disc was mine to begin with, after all. Do you all seriously have a problem with me redeeming my own pledge? Huh? Well, well. It seems this piece of evidence will explain the connection between this man and the murder. Testify again, this time. Tell us more about this disc. As you wish, I suppose. Though it's clear this disc has nothing to do with the murder case, in my opinion. Okay. About the disc. Magundal may be written on that disc, but I can verify that it is mine. On that day, the defendant pilfered my pledge ticket from me. I made great haste at the shop in hopes of reclaiming my item before her, but... The disc found its way into the police's hands either way. In other words, I had no reason to sneak into that shop. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. That's a good point. Uh, now that I think about it, it didn't even really occur to me. I mean, it's true. He couldn't have been going after the, uh, the disc, because obviously the police had it. He knew that. He saw them, like, coming to the shop, so... Obviously, they probably would have taken the disc as evidence, right? But didn't he think there's, there should have been something else, right? I think maybe that's what he was... Because he pointed out there should be, in addition to the disc and the coat, there should have been something else, right? I think that's what he was looking for. Hold on a moment. Would this McGundle be the man who was put on trial two months ago and set on fire? We still have bits of his ashes over there. The one who mysteriously died shortly after I declared him not guilty and just engulfed himself in flames. Yes, that is the one. What? Then, Mr. Crowgray, does this mean that you were acquainted with Mr. McGundle? Yes, my lord, I was. Order. I have to say. I wasn't quite expecting Mr. McGonnell's name to pop up here again. Unless it was in regards to how, how badly we fucked up in that case. According to Gina, McGonnell gave her this disc. On the night of McGonnell's crime, he told her to pledge this disc to Hatch's pawnbrokers. But that Crow Gray guy says it's his! It's a clear indicator that his testimony is full of lies. He went to the pawn shop to steal McGonnell's possessions. Now, defense, begin your cross-examination. Alright, I'm gonna get this motherfucker. Alright, bring it on, man, Zeeks. 
There's a lot of people in the stand right now. All right, about the disc. Here we go. The McGundle may be written on that disc, but I can verify that it is mine. But it has his name on it. How can you claim it as yours? You could probably tell, but being a telegraphist earns you quite the salary. Certainly, you are dressed rather well. Who's yet to rob for it? Normally, a wealthy man has no need for pawn shops. But as it happens, I once left my wallet at home by accident. With all the recourse, I pledged a high-quality brown coat at a pawn shop. Was this your coat? Well, of course. I can't pledge someone else's item. But I, what I had completely, completely forgotten was that I had left that disc inside the coat pocket. So that coat didn't fit you at all, stupid! Care to explain why the disc says to Magundal? Collecting rare music box discs happens to be a hobby of mine. I met Mr. McGundle at one of the London social clubs. To my surprise, he was also quite the fan of music boxes. So, this is... This was a sample disc before the final version was published. I had planned to let Mr. McGundle have a listen to it, but alas... You accidentally left it in your coat pocket when you pledged it. Precisely. Jean Bean didn't testify about any of that last time, did she? She didn't. McGundle coerced her into silence. If I badger Coat Crow Gray too much about this, he might expose Gina's perjury. Oh. Aw, oh, this is getting far too complicated. I shouldn't leave this subject alone for now. Damn it. On the day the defendant pilfered my pledge ticket for me. Mata! Gina stole your pledge ticket? Indeed. You could never hold your valuables too close in walking in these streets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Igiati! But Gina didn't do that! You would say that, but she's a pickpocket and a frequent offender at that. On the day of the crime, you had acquired information on Gina. Then you went to Hatch's Palmburgers in search of her. You did all this to seize McGundle's disc. Igiati. I object to the defense's baseless nonsense. N nonsense? I thought it was very well thought out. Excuse you. Objection sustained. Defense, this is a formal warning against baseless slander. Do you understand? Yes, my lord. Then allow me to continue with this pointless testimony. The disc found its way to the police's hands either way. It was confiscated by Inspector Gregson, correct? Yes, I believe that was his name. I was told that all items related to Mr. McGundle were being seized as evidence. Oh my god. Hold on, Mr. Mr. Gregson. Inspector Gregson. Excuse me, Inspector Gregson. What do you want? Did something come to mind when you were listening to Mr. Krograd's testimony? Krograd? No, not really. No, nothing at all. Let me ask another question then. Why was the yard after Cosmo McGundle's belongings? You expect me to be able to share that information? It's confidential! Is this one of your top secret investigations, Inspector Gregson? Y yes, uh, sir. Surely you understand. Two months ago, Cosmo McGundle met his untimely demise. And not my fault, by the way. Alright, still zero deaths. He was a prominent figure in London, but he could not escape the dark rumors about him. Lord Van Zeeks, where are you going with this? Are the police trying to cover up all the crimes he was involved in? Please, say no more! There are times when inspectors are assigned duties that must be carried out in secret. And you're implying that this was a direct order from the Lord Chief Justice Hart Vortex. I wonder why he seems so have so much faith in you. Oh. Oh, interesting. In any case, you want more information from me? You have to get permission from Lord Vortex first! It's alright, I've gone over my speed dial here. What in the world? It's like there's something big going on between the prosecutor and the inspector. Hmm. Interesting. So he's trying to cover up the misdeeds of McGundle? Because, why? To show that... They're, well, maybe to, so people don't realize what a monster he was, right? And not think that, uh, 
uh, the police failed with their job. I don't know, maybe McGundle even bribed the police, right? Maybe that there's a possibility he wants to cover that up, too. Suppose we have no right to demand more information from Inspector Gregson. Witness, return to your testimony. Thank you, my lord. Did I get anything from that? In other words, I had no reason to sneak into that shop. I didn't get anything. Mata! There may have been some high-value unreading pledges in there. No, there were not. Huh? The police sent a man to appraise all of the items in that shop. It was all a pile of rubbish, hardly worth the space it occupied. And the reason he went to the shop? He really was to retrieve McGonnell's belongings. For goodness sake, you really need to clean out your ears, friend. But I'll play along, assume that your hypothesis is correct. He to remind you that the disc was seized by the yard. It wasn't inside the shop anymore. That goes to show you that I had even less reason to break into the pawn shop. Are there no more McGunnell's items left in Hatch's pawnbrokers? Is that really true? Hey, Ryu, if you got evidence, you should shove it right in his stupid, annoying face. Shoot it in his face, like I do. Uh, was there something else? Did I actually have it in my inventory already? Oh, wait, 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 wait. That's right, um, there was additional details back here, right? I think one of these mentioned, like, a small box, didn't they? Yep, item pledge, a small box. This. This is what it is. Interesting, it seems like, though, I mean, I didn't get, actually get anything from that thing with Inspector Gregson. So, I, I feel like I actually could have probably missed that, right? If I just presented this right away. I'm actually kind of glad I ended up pressing them, because then I ended up seeing that bit... Which showed this interesting uh, rift between Van Zeeks and Gregson and possibly Chief Justice Vortex as well. Like, it seems like he, he's sort of maybe aware of what's going on. Maybe that's why he left to begin with. I, maybe it didn't have to do with his curse necessarily, but more with uh, what he knew about uh, the police covering up uh, shit like this. No reason, huh? Well, what about this shit? Igiati! I just realized actually says, banish this pledge ticket, and, and presses his box next to it. I didn't see that. That this was brought to the pawn shop under McGunnell's orders. Then you try to retrieve his pledge. Gigiotti. <laughs> Except the inspector confiscated that disc before he could take it for himself. With that truth established, there was no reason for him to break into the pawn Gigiotti. shop. Wrong again, big guy. That's not completely true. What? McGundle pledged another item at the same pawn shop. The second pledge ticket proves it. Ah. Uh. McGundle pledged two items to Hatch. You broke in to try and steal the second one. And you did together with your two partners in crime. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Second pledge ticket. Then what else was it that he deposited? The receipt only says a small box. Well, that's awfully vague. You mean to say that I brought these two idiots just to break in and steal a tiny box? I believe it's possible, yes. Utter nonsense. Why would I ever do that? Once the contract expires, the pledge item is unredeemed and placed it on the shop floor. All I would have to do is purchase it. I wouldn't have any good reason to steal it. That is true. Mm, you make a good argument. So does that mean... There was some reason this guy needed the box on that specific night! Igiari! Ah, my lord, I want to make something clear to the court. And what would that be, Lord Van Zix? Unfortunately for the defense, the truth is perfectly clear. No small box was stolen from the victim's pawn shop. We have evidence that says as much. Uh, why? Really? Inspector Gregson, submit the photographs. Sir, understood. Photographs? These pictures were taken by the camera that the great detective set up. Oh, this camera? As we previously indicated on the sketch, there were two of these cameras installed in the victim's shop. One camera was set to capture a hatch and any customer standing at the shop counter. The other one was set to capture the shelves where the unredeemed pledges lie. Go on to this pledge ticket. The redemption period for McGundle's box ended on April 13th at 9pm. This was two days before the crime was committed. 
The moment the deadline passed, that box would have been placed on the shelves. And then, two hours before the murder, at 11 p.m. on April 15th, this picture was taken. Uh. Oh. Why are these shelves so positively bursting with unredeemed rubbish? I do see a. a looks like a music box. Over there. It's funny, they, they put like a little ru like red rug thing underneath that I think to make it stand out more, too. Make it more obvious. Here's another photograph. This is from after the incident at 2 a.m. Very well, let us compare these two photos using stereoscopic method! Uh... Even when they're side by side, I fail to see any differences between these photos. Um, damn it, I, this one full screen, I'd be able to do the cross-eyed thing, but at a glance, they do not seem any different. The box is still there, too. Oh, my eyes are going blurry. Curse these magic eye things. It's natural to question whether or not anything was stolen after the victim died. We as Scotland Yard investigated that possibility thoroughly. Then these two photos have been examined already. Of course, my lord! After we've been taking us account of the eyes picture in each photo, we came to the conclusion that they are exactly the same. I see. As you can see, absolutely nothing was stolen from Hatch's pawnbrokers. This Japanese boy's claim is nothing more than a false accusation. Ah! Oh, Jiminy Cricket! No, I was so close! If I could prove that he stole one of McGonnell's pledges. Could have caught him red-handed. Hey, Ryu. I was just wondering about these two photos. Do you think they're... Do you think they're really identical? Um... God, I can't really do the cross-eyed vision thing here. I need a back way for my monitor to do it. Actually, no, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna shrink the size of the screen for temporarily so I can do this. <gasps> oh, I see it! Holy shit! You know, I gotta say, it is pretty cool this, when you do do it stereoscopically, actually, you do see it. So apparently, so, okay. Just to the right there, uh, in front, that, like, coffee, it looks like a coffee can thing is, in the first picture, is to the left, and to the second picture is to the right. It's the only thing that's different from what I could tell, though. <laughs> it really is like trying to find the six differences between, uh, two pictures. At the, again, the newspaper or something. Oh man, that was actually that was a really hard one to notice. Honestly, I, getting that at a glance would have taken a little bit of time. Huh? Very well, defense. The court wishes to confirm the following: on the night of the crime, nothing was stolen from the crime scene. Do you acknowledge this as truth? Do I? I should look at these photos again. Is there really nothing odd about them? Nothing out of the ordinary. Point out the abnormality. No abnormality. I had a feeling all along. There's clearly something odd about these two pictures. What? Defense, the court orders you to point out this oddity. Point out the abnormal abnormality in these photos. Alright. You, mister. This little... A little coffee tin or something. I will acknowledge that these photos look nearly identical. But there's just one part that's different. <laughs> you used your stereoscopic vision thing, didn't you? No, shut up, Jar 3! What? You should have crossed your eyes, Inspector Gregson. If you look at these photos stereoscopically... Man, we, we're just milking that freaking term for all it's worth this case, aren't we? Behold. This small box almost appears to jump out from the pictures. Hmm. Ah! I don't believe it! Damn it! <laughs> By the way, when you guys actually showed me a picture where you edited it to make it look like Man Six was crossing his eyes. <laughs> and he's like, motherfucker, I still can't see it. Give me a good laugh. <laughs> I was like, yes! That's what I wanted to see. Thanks for editing and putting that together. I don't believe this. No! You're right. Something right out at me. Ooh! So one logical conclusion. That night, McGunnell's box was not stolen. Instead, someone did pick up this box before trying to put it back where he found it. Lynn, this is it, isn't it? This is the small box deposited by McGundle. Yanni, Boulder Dash, what is this supposed to change? It 
wasn't stolen. It was just moved. The circumstance of the crime still haven't changed at all. I don't know, but... That's right. McGunnell's box wasn't stolen, but maybe what was in it was stolen. Just moved a bit. Does that mean the situation hasn't changed? No, it changes everything! Don't think it's changed the circumstance of the crime completely. What do you mean? The issue here is what was moved. A small box. That must mean something was inside, right? What? We need to examine the small box pictured here right away. It should still be on the shelf at Hatch's shop. There's no point. The owner of this box has been dead for two months. What does it have to do with us? Objection overruled, Lord Van Zees. Bailiff. Ah, uh, yes, uh, Jay, it's me, British Commander. I haven't shown up in a while. I think uh, I think it's forgotten I existed. Even though he knows I'm the most plot-relevant character in the entire game. Anyway, what do you need me, of, old chum? Head to the crime scene at once. Okie dokie. Show you the box in question. Examine the contents. Cheerio. Skip to the maloo, my dog. Just get out there and do it. Okay, I'm on my way. Mm. <laughs> mm. Man, he's got a nasty ass stare, I gotta say. Ben Zeke's when he gets pissed. Hmm. Wonder what dancing move I should do next. I expect a report within 30 minutes. Perhaps this would be a good time for a recess. I can't believe the Crown Court is being dragged about for such a pointless display. What was that? This is just more Japanese smoke and mirrors. They adore this foolishness. Why do you say that? This college boy had jumped to a ridiculous conclusion from the very start. He thinks our witness was trying to steal McGundle's pledges. But if he had any common sense, he would realize that none of it was worth stealing. Exactly. It's absurd to even imagine that I would attempt a robbery. Hmm. As you all know, Magundo was killed immediately after his trial, but he was declared not guilty. It was proven without a shadow of a doubt. The great Cosme Magundo was an upstanding Londoner who wouldn't hurt a fly. You proved it yourself, college boy. Have I, have I, have I been upgraded? I'm no longer Japanese boy, but college boy? I think I like that better, actually. Who's upstanding citizen who deposits some average pledges? A black coat with a disc in the pocket, and a small box. Honestly, you couldn't pay me to take those off your hands. No, he's right! This time I got it was red, so he couldn't understand if it was jewels or water cash. Don't be daft, you can't pull the water cash! Indeed, the prosecution raises a good point. The defense must show adequate proof. <sighs> Prove the significance of the items pledged by your upstanding former client! Your thoughts, defense. Do you have anything to present? What is the base behind your claim that these items are related to the case at hand? D um... Mm. What's wrong, Ryu? Is that kind of obvious that both of those are super important pieces of evidence? Of course it's obvious to you and me. We know the truth about both McGunnell and his disc. But if I tell the truth right now, that means telling everyone the truth of the acquittal I won for McGunnell. McGundle. to prove that it was an innocent verdict made possible by forged evidence. And this also might put uh, Gina in more trouble. Uh, oh! And we'd also be telling everyone that Gina committed perjury. I don't want to imagine this, but... Does Prosecutor Van Zeeks know? Is that why he's doing this? He... I mean... I mean, he's a sharp guy. I wouldn't be surprised. He knew... He knew McGunnel was fucking guilty. But... This might actually be a good opportunity. Huh? Why, Iris? Come on, you say it all the time. The truth will always, always come to light. What is the deeper meaning behind McGunnell's pledges? The only one who can tell us is Gina. But if I ask her to testify, she could inadvertently put us at a major disadvantage. 
Should I have Gina testify? Testify! My lord, I would like to make you a proposal. And what would that be, defense? While Mr. McDonald's box is being transported to the Crown Court, I would like to hear the defendant testify. Let's bring Gina Lestrade to the stand. The, the defendant? But for what purpose? I want to know more about the items Mr. McGonagall pledged to the Hatches Pawnbrokers. Gina Lestrade knows something more about the circumstances surrounding them. If she testifies, I'm sure that everyone will understand. Just how important these pieces of evidence really are. Oh, how very fascinating. I hope you haven't forgotten. Know what your client's testimony means for the both of you. Uh -huh. I know. He absolutely knows. <laughs> Lord Van Zeeks, could you play explain your statement? The prosecution consents to the defense's request. Put the current cross-examination on hold and demand testimony from the accused. This is what he's been fucking waiting for. I deserve that fucking win, baby! Very well then, I shall. Now, the court requests the defendant's testimony. The current witnesses should retire to the lobby and wait further instruction. Don't run away, please. Then, if you will excuse me, give me my hat back. Hold it, witness. Remain at the stand. You are to listen to the defendant's testimony. Understood. Oh, I'm surprised he, he just too. He's like, okay. I thought he'd be like, what the hell? Gina's going to testify now. Please, you have to trust me here, Gina. Real. Oh, interesting. But that wait, she gonna? It, she's got to tell the truth, though. That's the point. This is this is such a clever setup. Oh my god, what a great setup this is. So now they got to bring her to the stand. But this is something that this is a moment for her, right? This is a moment where, for the first time in probably her entire life, she has to trust in somebody else. But she doesn't trust in anybody. Right? Oh man, what a fucking great moment. This game's so fucking good, guys! God damn! This game's so fucking good! This is the moment now. The moment that she's like, she's gotta believe that Ryu is gonna come through for her, and then the truth will be actually her saving grace. The Ives of McGunnel pledged to Hatch's pawn brokers are deeply connected to the, the case that case from two months ago. I do believe this girl stood as a witness during that trial, yes. She did. Her testimony established Mr. McGundle's innocence. I got my smoke grenade launcher just in case this goes this goes a foul. Please don't. What an interesting turn of events. Everyone connected to that case is once again gathered here now. Perhaps this is what we call fate, Japanese boy. Ah, oh, back to Japanese boy again. Ah, yes. Divine justice. Two months ago. A bricklayer was stabbed to death inside an omnibus in the dead of winter. The only one inside the coach alongside the victim was Mr. McGundle. Naturally, Mr. McGundle was fingered as the prime suspect. But as the trial progressed, a new possibility emerged. It was possible that the murder had actually occurred on the roof. And that the victim's lifeless body had been dropped through the skyline. Gina Strauss' testimony brought that possibility to light. At the time, Gina was hiding in the omnibus. She hoped to steal from the coach's passengers. And so, Mr. McGunnel was declared not guilty. But immediately after the trial, he mysteriously died inside the Crown Court. Two months have passed, but neither case has reached a conclusion. Neither the omnibus murder nor the arson. However... The defendant's pledges weren't mentioned at the trial, I believe. Gina. Will you tell us the truth? Now's the time to speak out. Tell us what really happened during the crime two months ago. I wouldn't have a clue. I mean, like, I said all I know. You told us the real truth yesterday at the, at the jail, didn't you? Please. I beg of you. This is really important. But, but If, during your testimony two months ago, you happened to purposely hide the truth from this court, naturally you will be tried for perjury. 
On top of that, your reliability as a witness will be called into question. Right. Though, I must say, I have to wonder if you were ever to be considered reliable in the first place. J-Bean! Please! You gotta trust Ryu! Uh, Iris? Go on your side, Jean Bean! Like nationwide! All right, then. I'll talk. Gina. I suppose the defense has found the resolve to crush his own reputation. Oh, man. What an interesting turret. Like, that's just, that's a really fucking cool little twist and moment there. Like, it's great for that. It, it is also great that it could, again, inadvertently hurt us because, yes, it would, she could perjure herself, which would then make us wonder if anything else she says is, is true or not, right? Oh, man, it's, it's just really fucking good. <laughs> I have to say, I don't think I quite understand what is happening here. I feel a little left out. Context, please. But it appears there's some sort of secret being kept here. And that secret involves Mr. McGonagall's pledges at the incident two months ago. Go on, witness. The court orders you to testify. Testify about the truth you have yet to reveal. Everything's going to come to light here in this Crown Court. Prosecutor Van Zeeks is right. The only way forward is to steal my resolve as an attorney. Here we go. All right. What shall you tell us the truth here? Truth of two months ago. Truth is, uh, the victim was in the omnibus too. When I was pulled out of my seat, I saw that disc on the floor. Then I heard a scream from above as when the other two passengers ran for the police. We go to land the coachman some money and sent him to the nearby pawn shop. It threatened me. I had to keep quiet about what I'd seen in her. She, yeah, she told the truth. What in blazes is going on with her testimony? It's completely different from her testimony two months ago, is it not? Indeed it is, my lord. I don't like to be the one to say I told you so, but... Oh wait, who am I kidding? I love it. I told you so! He just fucking smashes the holy grail and wheels it like a fucking dagger. Bitch! I told you all! And all of you! You! Even you jurors up there, even if you're not the same ones from before, except the maid in the middle. Actually, no, you were up there before! Maid lady! This is on you! You and your stupid head! It's almost as if the verdict handed down to Mr. McGonagall was a complete mistake. Furthermore, it seems that Mr. McGonagall himself was scheming to deceive the court. I can only imagine there was a very sister plot working in the shadows. It's undeniable that there was foul play afoot at the trial two months ago. An unforgettable deed committed by the defendant, the witness, and even the defense. Good heavens! That whole trial was nothing but lies and forged in testimony! Mr. McGunn, the, the, the witness. And even the Japanese attorney, they were all in cahoots! No, you're wrong! No, no, no! I, I mean, the, the attorney block didn't know! You're not fooling anyone! He didn't know. That's hardly reliable testimony. How horrifying each even acquittal with devilish lies! Ah! Uh, but seriously, what did I do with that lance? And I wonder if Holmes is gonna come back and sue my ass. This evil cannot be left to Mr. Go punish them all! Say Shut up! I will acknowledge that we committed a grave crime, one not easily forgotten. I prepare to accept any punishment that awaits me. However, the testimony makes the truth clear. The items that Mr. McGonagall left behind are of profound significance. Very well, exchange student. If you're so passionate about the truth, the least we can do is listen. Also, I just wanted everyone to know, I didn't know at the time that he was guilty, okay? I just want y'all to know that. These are indeed regrettable circumstances. Hell, I even tried to point it out at the end of the trial. Did everybody forget that? You're the ones who couldn't come to a fucking decision about it. Master Narahodo. Uh, my lord. A suitable punishment will be formulated after this trial is ended. Oh, come on, man. Really? Understood. Hopefully he doesn't disbar me. I just got started on this shit. That shouldn't happen until the third game. <laughs> that in true Phoenix style. Or fourth game, actually. Now, Rodo. Now, begin your cross-examination. And I will beat you in my gavel silly later. Okay. Truth of two months ago. Truth is, the victim was in the Omnibus too. Mata! Mata! You were hiding inside the Omnibus at that point, right? So recall you were inside the seat trunk. 
Which I still don't understand how that's possible. Wouldn't it? Because, like, the thing was, we... That was one of the things, the, the bits of evidence that she changed, right? Was that she had to take the stuff out of the trunk because there was stuff in there. Which meant that there was likely stuff in there when the guy was working because that's where he stored his uh, his gear and supplies when, uh, when he was on the road. So she took it out of the trunk to make it seem like she could have been in there. But does that mean she actually was in there? Was she in there with all the stuff? She just squeezed herself in there? Then why did she feel the need to change the evidence? Just to make it that much more obvious? But it was the truth anyway. So, like, why? <laughs> I still don't really get that, to be honest. Yeah, but it was pitch black, so I couldn't see nothing. Two months ago, you testified that the only pastor inside the coach was Mr. McGundle, yes. In other words, she told us all bullface lies. Bloom and McGundle made me say that. It's okay, Gina. Just tell the truth now. We're Mayor Gundel and the victim acquainted. Not a clue. But they were kind of yammering at each other the whole time. What were they talking about? I couldn't hear them all too proper, but... It sort of sounded like business. They were talking about buying something. Mm, sounds like they were making some sort of deal. They got louder and louder until it sounded like they were starting a right, right aggressive row. Shook me so much I could hardly breathe. But then, all of a sudden, there was a real loud noise. Sounded like someone, someone had fell. That was when you screamed, correct? Yeah. And then that bugger McGundle found me. When I was pulled out of my seat, I saw that disc on the floor. <laughs> About the disc you saw. Did look like this. Yeah, that's probably it. It was on the floor, right next to that guy. I wonder if that disc actually belonged to the victim. McGonnell swapped it up right, in, right up and shoved it into his coat. And then, he made me sit in the seat opposite from it. What did McGonnell say to you? I was told to keep my lid zipped and talk about absolutely nothing I'd seen or heard there. That included the disc. His eyes, they terrified me. If I didn't say yes, I was sure that he'd stab me too. Mm. And then he started asking me all sorts of stuff about myself. My name, where I lived, about my life as a pickpocket too. And eventually, the murder scene was discovered. Yeah, I heard a clatter from above. Then I heard a scream from above, that's when the other two passengers ran for the police. <laughs> There were two pastors on the roof seats. Yeah. That little scream when they saw the body through the skylight. The coach would stop the coach straight away, and McGonnell made me hot. Too bad the computer guy is conveniently on the jury again. He made you hide. Yeah, he shoved me right back into the trunk. When the only must stop, the two Lord on the roof ran off to call the police. That proves those two passengers truly weren't connected to the murder. Hmm. So the only ones left at the scene were you, McGundle, and the coachman. It's dead like the other guy's dead like his body. Yeah, but I was hiding in the trunk. So someone left the coach door open, I could hear him talking outside. If I remember right, the coachman testified in McGundle's trial as well. I think his name was Mr. Beppo. But he also got paid off too, right? Well, he got paid off to get drop the coat off. What were they talking about? Oh, one of them say something like, I have no idea what happened. McGonnell handed the coachman some money and sent him to the nearby pawn what? shop. That pawn shop would be none other than Hatch's pawnbrokers, right? Hold on. Then, no, you must be saying. The coach was lying as well. At the very least, the pawn shop was not brought up in that trial. Means we gotta go arrest that asshole too, later. B my word. He took off his black coat and gave it to the coachman. It was a well wicked looking coat. He patted it down proper before handing it over. When I saw that, it was all clear. The stuff he was popping was worth a heck of a lot of dough. A dosh. That would explain why Gina was trying to sell a disc for such a high price. I remember she was arguing with Hatch over his value on the day of the crime. With McGonnell's water cash in hand, the coachman was happy to go to the pawn shop. The McGonnell's all on me over, told me to go outside the omnibus. 
He threatened me. I had to keep quiet about what I'd seen and heard. He threatened you. He told me that if I did what I was told, I'd be free to go off. Go off, off. Did he tell you to commit perjury, you little thief? That, and one more thing. He had another order for me. And that would be... He told me to take the pledge ticket from the coachman and keep it safe. The pledge ticket? And then, he didn't come back to redeem it two month in two months. I was to go to the pawn shop and pay off the interest instead of the redemption period. He gave me the dosh just for that. I don't quite understand. Why would Mr. McDonald do such a thing? Why would he need to deposit his coat before the arrival of the police? I can only think of one reason. McGundle didn't want those items to be seen by the police. They were very important items that he had no choice but to hide. After all that, he let me leave the crime scene. Good job telling the truth, Gina. Jane Bane trust you, Ryu. And still, she's going to be tried for perjury after this trial is over. That's my chance to get the details from her. Alrighty, we gotta press her so hard that she can't even stand anymore. Y yeah, sure. You know, something's kind of bothering me. What is it, Iris? Those two have been whispering about something for a while now. She's right. It's like they're engrossed in a secret discussion. Oh, interesting. Oh, is it? So do they actually know each other? Or something? Is that why? Is he part of, like, this cover-up or something, too? Is that why Grex is acting so dumb around him? Not being like, like, he... Fucking saw him went there and we ran away. Maybe they actually intentionally let him get away. He almost seemed panicked. I wonder if there's something I could do about it. Did I like miss something? In, um, I don't know if I missed like an interjection at some point from them. Oh, well, maybe I just gotta uh, press and then look over at them. Pardon me, Inspector M Gregson and Mr. Crow Gray. Inspector Gregson, Mr. Crow Gray. Oh, 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 what? What? Why did you do that? You seem to be whispering something for a moment there. May I ask what you were discussing? Uh, discussing? Don't be ridiculous. I'm not in the station of a suspicious man. I must agree. I have nothing to say to an inspector who sees my rightful property. Those two have been talking since the beginning of my cross-examination. It's almost as if they've been negotiating about something. Wow. What in the fuck? How deep does this shit go? That's enough. The court desires no further testimony. The truth of this case has become startlingly clear. Two months ago, a certain deal was taking place inside that omnibus. They were negotiating the price of this disc, but it seems negotiations failed. Outraged by the p price of the disc, McGonnell chose to steal it by force. And why not add murder to the laundry list of other crimes he had already committed? But that just shows how insignificant this disc really is! But they don't ask me why it's so important, though. I'm also wondering, could, th could this guy... Could, uh... Uh, Rupert Kroger right here be, like, working with the police or something? Like, he was actually undercover to go f get this disc for them? Because it maybe implicates the police in some way? Two months passed, then two days before this crime, McGundle's pledges would reach the deadline for the redemption period. I had no idea what I was meant to be doing with that ticket thingy. I mean, I knew he kicked the bucket after that trial and all. Much like the pickpocket you are, you are moved to take his pledges for yourself. Well, it was just gonna get flogged off. What's that? Arm and me taking him. You can't blame a girl for wearing a dapper goat, can you? It was just my size, thanks, thanks to McGonnell's blooming short stature. Caused him a gun murdered a man just to get his hands on this disc. Would you happen to know why, miss? Like I'd have a clue. It, it's just... It had to be worth a fortune, so if I took it, maybe I could flog it off for a good sub. You can't blame a girl for wanting to make something with moolah in it, can you? Mm. Um, my lord. Uh, Lord, the bailiff has just returned to the crime scene with new evidence. N Nani the fuck?
I've gone to a place that mysterious box two months ago. It has to be the key to solving this mystery. Oh my god, what perfect time for another to be continued! Man, these things are timing just perfectly! Perfectly! Booyah, bitch! Alright! Man, this is fucking great. <laughs> this is really good. Oh, it, it, it's definitely seeming like there's definitely some police corruption going on here. Which is why uh, Narhota said at the start of this, right? That uh, he's gonna, after this case, right? He's gonna see the dark side of the fucking law of London. I'm just, I'm betting. But it doesn't make me wonder then, could it be that Egg Benedict, aka Rupert Co Crowgray, was actually maybe working with the police to get it for them, but without being necessarily affiliated with them? So maybe they let him get away? I, I don't know. I hmm. It does make you wonder, though. But anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Man, that was a fucking good episode. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite, and subscribe for an all random come Piggy Penguin. For this LP, where the days are always sunny, and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy!